Hey there, Care Blazers. Dr. Natalie here. Welcome back to the place where we talk about everything dementia. Today's video is a follow-up to last week's video on guns and dementia. Last week, we talked about signs that your loved one may no longer be safe to own a gun. This week, we're talking about what to do if you suspect your loved one is no longer safe to own a gun. Do you take the gun away from them? Do you tell them? Stay tuned, we'll cover all that. Okay, so you watched last week's video and you're starting to realize that your loved one probably isn't safe anymore to operate a gun because they're confused or they don't recognize you anymore or they no longer know how to work a remote. Whatever symptom it was that struck a chord with you, now what? What are you going to do now that you think that your loved one is no longer safe to operate a gun? Well, there are several options you could take. If your loved one is in the beginning stage of dementia, or perhaps they're not even at the dementia stage yet, they're more in the mild cognitive impairment stage, which is right before dementia, you could consider sitting down and having a talk with them. Be open about your concern and hear what they have to say, like to see happen to their handgun or firearm. Perhaps they would like to see a particular child or grandchild receive the gun. Perhaps they feel very strongly about keeping the gun in the home and would rather talk about options like keeping it locked and lo unloaded at all times. If your loved one seems hesitant about the conversation or really firm in wanting to keep their gun the way that they've always kept their gun, you could consider asking them how they would feel if they accidentally hurt somebody that they loved. If your loved one is in the more moderate to severe dementia range, a conversation is not a recommended way to go. Some options you could try include removing the gun from the home entirely. If you're afraid to move the gun because you aren't familiar with it, have a trusted friend, family member, neighbor, or even local law enforcement move the gun. Consider doing it when your loved one is not around or awake to see this occur. The less of a big deal you make out of this, the less likely there will be an argument from your loved one. Another option would be to keep the gun unloaded and locked in a gun safe or using a gun lock. This would make it difficult for your loved one to be able to load a gun, unlock the safe, unlock the gun lock making it less likely that they would be able to fire the gun. However, it's not foolproof. Another option would be to have the trigger mechanism disabled. This is an especially good option if your loved one is very sensitive about keeping their gun and keeps it unlocked and is against any attempt to remove it from their possession. You do wanna keep in mind though that just because the gun is disabled and may no longer be able to fire, anybody who, uh, encounters your loved one and sees that gun and if your loved one is pointing that gun to them they're going to react as if it is a dangerous situation the person doesn't know that gun is disabled so it could still lead to a pretty unfortunate circumstance so just keep it in mind but it is a decent option for somebody who is just very married to the idea of keeping their gun by their side in many cases, some of the care blazers I've worked with have just removed the gun entirely from the home and their loved one never even notices or mentions it at all. In other cases, your loved one may notice that the gun is missing and they may ask you where that firearm is at. In those cases, you want to come up with a short, simple reply that you feel like your loved one will be able to handle. So some care blazers I know might say something like, I had the gun dropped off for professional cleaning, or I let your grandchild borrow the gun for hunting, or I let your child borrow the gun for the driving range practice or shooting range practice. So what you know your loved one best, use whatever short explanation you feel like they'll be able to tolerate without um, increasing anger or anxiety. Now for some of you who may feel uncomfortable lying to your loved one, I'd encourage you to go back and watch one of my early videos on whether or not it's okay to lie to your loved one. There is such a thing as a compassionate lie. So if you feel like the truth is gonna to lead to a lot of distress or anxiety or anger in your loved one, and as long as you're doing it from a place of good to avoid harm, you could consider entering a compassionate lie in the place of telling the truth which is what we were getting at when we were saying things like, I'm having it professionally cleaned or I'm letting so-and-so borrow the gun. 
Careblazers, I hope this video has been helpful to you in some way. Let me know by leaving a comment below whether you've made any changes or plan to make any changes to the way you keep guns in your home based on this video. Also, I'd love to see you over on my Facebook page called Dementia Care Blazers, where I post little tidbits throughout the week and you get more of a little personal behind the scenes look at what I do here at Care Blazers. Okay, Care Blazers, until next week, bye.